Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we want to welcome everybody to our online worship experience and broadcast. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's going to be something that's going to be shared that's going to be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel, and myself, we just want to say welcome to everybody. We want you to take this time right now to go ahead and share this video on your social media platforms. I believe this is a strong word that's going to come forward today of people that people need to hear this so i want you to buckle up and get ready to go i want you to be ready to receive this word all of our first time visitors we want to welcome you today all of our first time we just want to say thank you for showing up today we just want to be a blessing to you and just love on you and tell you how much we appreciate you and thank uh thank you for tuning in today we know that there are many other platforms whether it's in person virtual that you could be visiting today that you're here with us today Listen, Spirit of Fire Nation, I want y'all to begin to share this. Get ready. Invite somebody to church today. So whether it's in person or virtual, invite people to church. There's even a statistic that, you know what? There are many more people that would come to church if somebody would just invite them. So sometimes we just have to just reach out and say, hey, we want to invite you. You may already, they may already know about us, but hey, still say, hey, come on in. Pastor's preaching. A word is coming forward today that I believe is going to stir you up and get you ready to go. So in the name of Jesus, let's have a word of prayer. I'm ready to jump into this right now. Um, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding. I just invoke the power of your presence right now that the anointing rests heavy upon me, that it flows through me, that sound wisdom, knowledge, doctrine, and understanding shall go at an all-time high and flow at an all-time high. We thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. We bless you for it, and we thank you for it, Father. We thank you for great insight. Father, we just thank you, not just for revelation, but impartation, motivation and inspiration as well. And so we thank you and we give you praise for it. We do cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. Holy Spirit, you are the miracle worker. You are the teacher. You are the one here with us in the earth as the church to demonstrate the kingdom of God. And so, Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for open doors that no man can shut. We declare divine favor right now that, Father, you're raising up people to use their power, resources and influence to assist us and to help us. And that you're also raising us up to use our power, resources and influence to assist and to help others. We thank you right now that we have the heart. You have the heart of the king in your hand and you turn it with us however you will. We thank you right now that we have the ear of those of delegates, Father, of those kings of, of nations and presidents of corporations and companies and nations. We thank you right now for the leaders that we're developing to dispatch in the earth as the embassy of God. We thank you right now that we are your citizens. We are citizens of heaven functioning in this planet. And Father, we thank you for full-blown manifestation of your glory. Father, I invoke your power and presence like never before. I thank you right now that even as I begin to preach, as I talk to you in private, in my private time, Father, of things that I ask for you to do for their lives, that they will experience your tangible presence and anointing wherever they are right now. And so we give you praise for deliverance that will take place, healings that will take place, soundness that will take place, that you're driving out the spirit of fear. Yeah, every perverted and wicked spirit. Father, bresh de refras de cando sote. We thank you for it now. We call it done now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, glory to God. Glory, glory. Let's jump into this. I am going to deal with today. We've been talking about the kingdom of God and walking in the kingdom of God. And I want, today I specifically want to talk about the kingdom within, the kingdom within, the power of the inner man, the kingdom within, the power of the inner man. So I, I want to I want to open up with a statement and I want to go from here. Now, I'm going to tell you now, I want y'all to pull. I want y'all to get ready. Intercessors, I, want, I know y'all been praying. I always say, y'all go ahead and be praying. Um, to Just everything that needs to come out, that it will come out. 
um, in my time of prayer, I just began to see things and, and the presence of God came upon me real strong and real heavy. And I was so ready to come out and, and, and deliver this word today to you. Now, humanity, this is my opening thought, opening statement that I want to deal with. And I'm going to just take this thing step by step. And when it hit, it hit. However, God wants to do it. Humanity was created by God. In other words, humanity was created to be God's reflection in the earth. And as sin entered into the earth through Adam's disobedience, Christ restored us back into right relationship and fellowship with God. When you become born again, your identity, and then before I go on, see, humanity was created to be God's reflection. We are created in God's image and after his likeness. So we're to be, it's almost like we're his, we're duplicates, his duplication in the earth. He created us in his image after his likeness. Remember, we are tripart being spirit, soul, and body. And God is the triune God, God, the father, son, Holy spirit. These three are one. They function and flow as one. And so now when you become born again, your identity changes from that of a mere human to that of a supernatural being with the life and nature of God abiding in you. So for you to just make the statement, I'm only human. I'm sorry. When you are born again and you now accept Christ into your life, and your spirit now, it was dead, separated from God, but now is made alive unto God. And God puts his spirit and his nature on the inside of us. It now transforms us and changes us into another man or woman. So you are no longer just human. You have the supernatural power of God abiding in you. And so we need to begin to renew our minds to who we already are and begin to function at that level. There should be power flowing out of us at an accelerated rate, at an all time high. The more we learn about who we are and the more we learn about what we're to function in, the more power we're going to begin to see manifest. Let me keep going. And so watch this. He says, now God changes us from mere human beings to that of supernatural beings with the life and nature of God abiding in us. We are referred to in scripture as kings and priests, ambassadors citizens of heaven, righteous, and et cetera. And it is our job to manifest our divine nature on earth and cause change and to rule and reign. It's our job to manifest our divine nature on the earth. It's our job to manifest who we are, but we must learn who we are and we must learn how to function in the system that now we are now a part of. We are a part of this kingdom system. We are a part of the kingdom of God or God's method of doing and being right. His method of operation, how God deals with sickness, how God deals with lack, how God deals with depression, how God deals with relationships, how God deals with whatever it is that we're dealing with. We need to take what he has said, his kingdom keys and begin to apply them. And we'll begin to see the supernatural come into play. Sometimes we think supernatural we just automatically think spectacular, something so grand. Those are part of it. You will have those manifestations, but understanding the fact that God has put his nature within you and strengthened you with the spirit of might or divine strength to even endure or overcome a situation for you to go through what you went through and still come out in your right mind is the supernatural at work. Is God's ability coming upon you that kept you together and sustained you through all the hell you've been through. And God is saying, you have not gone what you've gone through to come out of it with nothing in your pocket, nothing attached or increased in your life. Uh, -uh. he says, you've been through too much for you not to come out on top of this situation. You're supposed to come out better than how you started before you went through what you went through. You thought when God says, I want to restore you, it's not just going back to your former state, it's going back to his original state, what he originally called us to be, what he originally called us to do. And so he's saying this, I need you to begin to renew your mind to the fact that you are a king and a priest. Priest, you are now 
creating your heavenly father's image and after his likeness and everything that he's deposited in us is for the purpose of us ruling and reigning in this life through and by Christ Jesus. Now, I want us to begin to go in here now, and it's our job to manifest this divine nature. In the book of Romans 5, 17, Romans 5, 17, it says this, for by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. We are, watch this, we are here to manifest God's kingdom with signs, wonders, and miracles following. There should be signs. This is that word fruitfulness, signs and wonders. People ought to see something in you. People ought to see something around you, upon you. There should be something that you bring to the table everywhere you go, that when you show up, the answer shows up. When you show up, power shows up. When you show up, peace shows up. When you show up as God's representative, the glory should show up. God's manifested goodness in this earth. You are a carrier of the glory of God. Now, I want you to write that down. I want you to say it to yourself now that I am a carrier of the glory of God. I'm the carrier of God's manifested goodness. I'm a carrier of God's presence. I am his distribution center. And when I show up, the glory shows up. When I show up, things ought to change. When I show up, things ought to be rearranged. When I show up, I should leave things better than how I found them. Why? Because I showed up. I showed up and I recognize who I am and whose I am. Oh, I'm getting ready to get stirred up here now because now you got to recognize the glory is in me. I'm a glory carrier. I carry the presence of God wherever I go. Now, whoo. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. Now I like this. Now I kind of read over that scripture real fast. I want to go back real quick in Romans five seventeen. by one man's offense, death reigned. So because of what Adam did, death reigned much more, much more. They which receive, watch this. He called it abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. I got abundant grace and the gift of righteousness. I got abundant grace, God's unmerited, unrestrained goodness, favor, mercy, the total package that he blessed me when I didn't deserve it. But watch this. He also gave me the gift of righteousness coupled with his abundant grace. He made me righteous and granted me favor in the process. So wherever I go, I am clothed with God's favor. I am clothed with God's goodness and I have abundant grace everywhere I go. There is unmerited favor that I have everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, you ought to expect great favor to show up right now. I don't care if it's things that people, I don't care if there has to be things that will be reversed just because you showed up. Deadlines that were given that people would grant you favor and say, you know what? You come on in. You know what? No, yours is accepted. You know what? Whatever it is you got to do, you got to listen. We're going to help you with this in Jesus name. Now I'm going to turn off my Siri because she's trying to she's trying to mess me up here. So you ain't doing this today. Now watch this. I don't know why I got this thing on. I'm going to go ahead and take it off because I got to preach this. Now any other time I call on Siri to call on to, to do something she don't show up. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm just doing it. Y'all help me real quick. Just bear with me real quick. Amen. We're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Watch this. Wherever we go, the glory shows up. Wherever we go, we are carriers of this glory. There is power that God wants to bring upon us physically to accelerate things in our lives. Remember in the book of Acts 1 and 8, he says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come up on you and you shall be witnesses unto me. God's saying, I want to now bring this power from within and get it upon you so you can begin to demonstrate my glory in the earth. I, I was seeing some stuff, some individuals that the power, I remember, I'm going to get ready to go. I don't want to get off on a tangent, but I remember the, the, the first time that the, the, not the first time that the power came on me, but I remember I was set free and delivered to worship God and to praise God. And I had this guy, you pastor, prophesy to me that there was going to be a great freedom, that God was going to bring a great freedom in worshiping him. 
because it used to be a moment I used to be afraid to even lift up my hands. And like when I be in church and I see everybody else doing it, but it was a sense of shame of just like, man, I, I just feel funny doing it. And I remember I might have been about 18 years old. I don't know, maybe 18, 17, 18, it might have been 19. I don't remember. But I remember this particular Sunday, the, the choir was singing. And I remember this guy had prophesied to me. And it might have been when I was in high school. No, just, just graduated high school. And I remember, man, I began to shout and begin to praise God. And while I'm shouting and praising God, I'm like, what in the world am I doing? But I remember his power coming on me. And God touched me. He, he divinely touched me that day. And I remember it was like the chains broke off from that day forward. From that day forward, there was such a freedom in me worshiping God. There was such a freedom in him, me allowing him to use me the way he wanted to use me. But it was a breakthrough moment. And I believe there are some people that are about to have breakthrough moments. There were some I began to see having those same moments where they just begin to break out of their normal shell. And all of a sudden now that you're about to break forth in the freedom to worship God. There is an intense freedom in worship that God is bringing upon us, that God is bringing in our midst, that he's even bringing in this ministry. I'm talking about a freedom to worship and an uninhibited worship like never before. And you better get ready because when that begins to happen, you're going to begin to see the glory descend and begin to manifest in people's lives, homes, in their houses, that even now that the glory will begin to go, I mean, to wherever this message is transmitted, it. The glory is going to begin to show up. I mean, you're going to begin to be healed. Even yeah, some healings will take place while I'm preaching, but there's going to be an anointing for productivity like never before. There's going to be things where it's going to be things you're going to begin to sense a new motivation on the inside of you to get stuff done. There's a new drive and a new zeal. Some of you just going to think it's because the spring has come. Uh-uh. Yeah, you get excited with the weather change, but this is beyond that. This is something that God is beginning to do to begin to give a divine motivation. The Bible talks about the gift of faith. In other words, God will supernaturally impart faith in you for you to be able to believe for stuff that you couldn't believe for before. So now even the manifestation of the gift of faith for you to be able to believe. And you'll be like, man, I've never believed this big for something ever before. But God is saying, I'm going to impart that faith in you for you to begin to go after stuff that is taken that you've delayed for years because the time is now to get it done. It has to get done and you have to go. So that means your body has to be in alignment. Your mind has to be in alignment. Your spirit has to be in alignment. And for some of you, God is dealing with you about weight loss like never before, not just losing the weight, but from gaining muscle to gaining endurance to give you new energy to get the assignment done because you can't do it in the house that you currently live in because it'll wear you out. And he says, I need you healthy and strong. I need you to have certain systems in your life, even to mentally handle the new assignments that I'm about to bring you into so that you won't now fail this time around in this thing. He says, I'm going to strengthen you with might by my spirit in the inward man. And I'm talking about a divine resistance to the enemy that has desired to sift you like wheat in your thought life. And so no longer will you be hounded. Now watch this. He'll try to come, but when he come, you're going to be so strengthened and empowered by the Holy ghost that you'll resist him with ease. And it'll be like water off of a duck's back. And I come against right now, every attack against your mind that has come to sift you like wheat, to get you worn out, to get you defeated. And I declare that that dream arise in you again. Some of you have backed off of dreams because of the work that has to be done along with the dream. But God says this, I'm going to empower you to get it done. For that was of me. And now I'm going to infuse you and empower you to do it. In Jesus name. Now watch this. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> The kingdom of God in its most basic and generic definition is God's way of doing things, his method of operation. And God reproduced himself in the form of man in Genesis 1, 26. And when God blessed man in the beginning, this is what he was doing. He was transferring power to him so that he, watch this, he fulfilled the mandate that God has given him, which was, which was to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, 
subdue and have dominion or to dominate. We're to dominate what we're called to do. We're to have dominion. I like the way Miles Monroe said it years ago. He says, when you are fruitful, you multiply, replenish and subdue. It will equal domination. You will have dominion when you learn how to be fruitful and to be fruitful. Watch this is to be faithful in what you're called to do. Faithfulness is tied to consistency and discipline and you doing what you need to do, what you've been called by God to do, but to do it the right way. You can do something, but do it the wrong way. And God is saying, I'm fine tuning your focus now so that now you won't be all over the place because now less is going to be more for some of you. For many of you, less is more that you'll begin to fine tune what you give your energy to, because now you got to get fruitful in that area. So now you will learn how to start saying no to stuff that's been draining your energy and distracting you to do the thing that God called you to do. If he called you to do one thing, don't keep adding 10 and 12 other things. You need to lock into the one thing he told you to do and then build your life around your purpose. You've been trying to build purpose around everything else you've been doing and it ain't been working. He says, no, you got to get into purpose and that's where your fruitfulness will be. When you get into purpose, that's where your growth and your development will be. You'll be replenished to do what you're supposed to do. And now when you're in place, you'll begin to develop others around you and I'll give you the team to get the job done. He says, you got to be in it, but you got to be all in. You got to be all in with your purpose. You got to be locked in. For some of you, you, you is, there's no more time to waste. You got to lock in the purpose now. You got to lock in to being fruitful. And he says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to be, I want you to multiply because watch this. When you are fruitful, you're already seedful. In other words, you already have the seed in you to be fruitful. Whatever God called you to be and to be fruitful at, he's already placed the seed in you of that fruitfulness. Whatever is in you, watch this. He's already placed gifts, talents, and abilities in you. But now you need to take what you're gifted at, become skilled in it so that you turn into a master of it. Because remember, God wants you to walk in divine mastery as a king and a priest. Part of the definition of a king is that you are preeminent in all things. You are first place. You're the best at what you do. You are a chief amongst your competitors. Whatever you do, it is okay to desire to be the best at what you do and develop yourself in that. You can have a natural skill set as an athlete. I mean, a natural gifting as an athlete, just natural ability. But if you take the guy who hustles, who works day in and day out on their craft and the person who's just gifted and just gets up and does it, the, even the person who has outworked them will even begin to surpass that individual who may be naturally good at something, but somebody outworked you and they developed their skills. So they became better at it. For some of you, you are already gifted at what you do, but now you need to begin to craft even your leadership skills to advance you to where you need to begin to go. What, what you're doing now is you've been praying in the spirit and you've fallen out in the presence of God and the glory has descended upon you. But that glory descends upon you to elevate you and to strengthen you to do what you call to do. This is a time where your mind is going to be elevated, where you need to begin to think with such clarity, creativity and advancement like you've never seen before. And he says this, you need to begin to expect of me to give you witty inventions, ideas and concepts. You need to expect of me to think better than you've ever thought before because you've dealt with that thing long enough. It has been an enemy. It has been for some, I don't know who this is for, there has been a spirit. It's like a little imp that has harassed your mind for years. And now God is saying this, you, once you really see what that thing is, you'll really begin to see that it is on the bottom of the totem pole in the spirit realm and it has no authority or power over you. And God is trying to get you to rise up in your authority and to reject and to resist that wicked spirit and command it to leave in Jesus name because it's giving you a false narrative in your mind about who you are. Satan is trying to make you think that you're not enough, that you are not equipped to get it done. But God is saying, I'm coming today to 
shatter that thought process. And when you shatter that thought process, you will realize you already gifted for where I've called you to go. You are already ready to go where I've called you to be. And so Satan has been trying to hold you back. It is the spirit of containment. He is trying to hold you captive in your mind and you about to be free in your mind right now, right? Not about to be. I call you free now in Jesus name. Now, I want you to do this for some of you. I want you to put your hands on your own head and I want you to declare that my mind is elevating to catch up to where my spirit is. My mind is elevating now. I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed within me. The thoughts of God are within me. And so right now I declare and decree and I shut down any attack of the enemy. I place a hedge of protection around us, around you, that any time the enemy tries to come your way, I call on the angels of heaven, the forces of the almighty God to surround you and to protect you. But I call on the greater one in you to rise up strong in you, to resist and to reject it now. Say this, say, I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. What's going to begin to happen when you begin to speak? Oh, I'm trying to get ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself. But when you begin to speak, creative power is being released out of your mouth. And when you declare that your mind is sharp, alert, and attentive, that I have the memory of the justice blessed, I retain information well. I comprehend information well. In the name of Jesus, my mind, will, intellect, emotions, and imagination are strong and in line with the word of God. I think pure thoughts because this is where it all begins in your mind. If the seed of perversion is sown into your mind, it'll begin to produce. And if it's culminated, cultivated, and it'll begin to produce in your life, God is saying, I'm killing it at seed form now. Whatever thing that is trying to hound you, kill it in seed form, kill it in your mind, cast it down in your thinking, and it'll never manifest in your mind. Fear cannot penetrate the glory of God that's coming on you right now. In the name of Jesus. I come against panic attacks. I come against anxiety. I come against fear. I come against worry. I commanded to take his hands off of you. You are not rooted in fear, but the spirit of God is upon you. God is not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind, discipline and self-control. You have self-control and some of you are afraid that you're not going to be able to handle the success that even God has given you. God is saying this, I'm causing discipline to come in your life. You're going to, you're going to do this. You're going to discipline your flesh and it's going to help you elevate you to your next season. That's all it is. If God keeps telling you to overcome that thing, because it'll be the thing that tries to kill you as you move forward into your new season. He says this, no more. No more bondage, no more addiction, no more pain, and no more shame in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh-uh, 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 yeah. Now, when God blessed man, he was transferring power to him so that he could fulfill the mandate that God had given him, all right, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. And it was the same power that he used to create the earth, the same power the same power he used to create the word earth is what he blessed us with. We have creative power. We are co-creators with God. He's given us the authority to create and to innovate. He's given us the authority to speak life. He's given us the authority because the greater one abides in us when we speak because words are containers and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks as you come out of your spirit, man, speaking words, spirit led, spirit directed. The Holy Ghost will show you what you need, what you need to speak out of your mouth because he knows what needs to be created out of you. In the name of Jesus, you begin to declare, I have all of the necessary tools and resources to get the job done. I have the the right influences in my life. I have the right mentors in my life. I declare that I have the right skill sets to get the job done, that I'm developed and disciplined in all that I do. And I enforce discipline, which is enforced obedience. I discipline my flesh to do what's right because it's right. And I do it right in Jesus name. This power abides in us to help us. God did not leave us alone. He did not leave us comfortless, but he gave us another comforter, the Holy Ghost himself to empower the church to get this job done. We are a supernatural church comprised of supernatural beings. We are supernatural. 
We are supernatural in what we do. We are supernatural in what we do. There is grace and power to get the job done. You are grace to be an administrator, grace to be a preacher, grace to be a teacher, grace to be a doctor or a lawyer, grace to be a mechanic, grace to be a businessman. Whatever your functionality is in the body of Christ and in the earth, you are graced forward. There is, they, see, who. We need everything in this earth. You are blessed to be a technician. You are blessed to be a pilot. You are blessed to be in armed services. You are blessed to be an athlete. But why? Because now it's going to give you a platform. You are blessed to do everything you are called by God to do. Once you embrace the fact that I'm called number one to do this, but then two, I'm graced and blessed to do it. I can't quit. I can't quit when I know I'm called to do this thing. Now, God, I thank you that skill sets will be developed, that, Father, you will begin to motivate people again. Where they've lost interest, it'll be sparked back, wherever they need to be. I'm talking about areas you need to be sparked in again. That now, because of just what you've been through, it's worn you out. And because it wore you out doesn't mean you won't call to do it. It's just that it wasn't done the right way. And Satan has tried to come to wear you out to get you to quit ahead of your time. Nope. I come against premature death also in Jesus name. You will not leave this planet until your assignment is fulfilled and you will leave satisfied with long life. He satisfies us and shows us his salvation. We live long and we live strong in Jesus name. Now watch this. Now God is the same power that God used to create the heavens and the earth that he put on man. And he wanted man. Watch this. Listen to this. He wanted man to finish the job he started. <laughs> How can you say that? He told man, I want you to be fruitful, to multiply. Now remember this, I want you to replenish. You only replenish something that was already there. I want you to subdue. I want you to have dominion. Now, I. <laughs> I don't have time to do it. I said, I've been saying it for years. I really have to deal with this. The subject of the world that then was before Adam and Eve came on the scene. There were, there were people that were here before that. Even you can even see it's dated back where you even see from a sign, a scientific point of view that there was life far before that. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We don't preach about it much in pulpits. But there was a world that then was. That's why he told them to replenish. I want you to now subdue this earth. I want you to take what I've given you and build from here. I want you to grow this thing. I'm going to put you in a garden, but I want you to replenish the earth. I want you to subdue it. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to multiply. I want you to have dominion. You're supposed to rule over this thing. That's the mentality. <laughs> Y'all, let me, this, this, this part of my assignment, I'm not against, listen, there's so much in this book that needs to be preached, but there are so many people who just preach about salvation to get to heaven that you got to realize you're so ready to get to heaven that you don't realize you're supposed to dominate on the earth. And you need to understand you've been called to dominate. Demons are not designed to rule over us. They rule over the unsaved. That's what rules them. But as the children of God, he does not overrule us or rule over us. We've been seated far above him. We have authority and dominion and using the laws of the kingdom to dominate in this earth. Oh, Lord, I need to develop some dominion minded people that when you go into an area, you dominate where you go in. Watch this. You Holy Ghost filled and you go on the job working with children and you know that the demon forces have been attacking their families, bloodlines and lineages. And you know, because of things that their parents are into and stuff that's going on, you go into the atmosphere and you can smell the stench of poverty. 
and you've been called in grace by God to eliminate that thing wherever you go. You've been called to now go in and to develop heaven on earth wherever we go. And so now you got to be ready for it. You got to know what you're working with. You go in praying in the morning before anybody gets there. You pray at home, get yourself stirred up to handle whatever it is you're dealing with, because you're going to have to deal with these things behind the scenes for us. Everything ain't a demon, but I understand you don't realize the strain and the wear and tear that you're dealing with is because it's a spiritual battle, but you got to stir yourself up and stir that gift up and stir that power up to now begin to say, I declare in this environment, in Jesus name, Shalom, I declare peace and I take authority coming into this environment in Jesus name. I come as a representative of heaven and this is my spiritual jurisdiction because God placed me here. You got to have an attitude about that thing. You got to get your kingdom swagger where you begin to say, no, where I am, God is. That, that's a different mentality. Wherever I am, God is. I want you to say that. Say, wherever I am, God is. Say, wherever I am, God is. God abides in me. God lives in me. God dwells in me. Now, let's keep going. Now, watch this. Jesus tells us in John 15, 1 through 16, that we are to bear much fruit. Now, I'm just giving it to you. And he says he wants our fruit to remain. He wants our fruit to remain. I'm trying to think, should I go there? But um, for sake of time, he wants, I want you to read that John 15, 1 through 16, that we are to bear much fruit so that the Father is glorified. We glorify the Father when we are fruitful. Now, the question is, the question that I have is, and the question you might need to ask is, what does fruitfulness look like for you? What does fruitfulness, because sometimes you can be fruitful, don't even realize it. You may think you're not making any difference, but you didn't realize the one person that you touched, touched two other lives and they touched 10 other lives. And as a result of you dealing with the one that now it began to turn into a harvest of many. So don't neglect what God is calling you to do and don't neglect what you've already done. Be thankful for what you've already done. And I pray that God begins to show you. Sometimes we won't see the true fruitfulness until we get to heaven. But we see all of the lives that were impacted. There was a study that, that was done years ago that said one person impacts 10,000 lives in their lifetime. Just think about that. I don't know how to even study that to find that out, to be honest with you. But one person impacts 10,000 lives. And it can be the one life you impacted that impacted many others. So don't you ever neglect what God is calling you to do. But he also wants our fruit to remain. Because sometimes if you don't see fruitfulness, then all of a sudden a weariness comes in or a lack of motivation because you may not feel like what you do matters. But God wants to encourage you that what you do does matter and that you do have purpose. Because sometimes what we think fruitfulness we judge our fruitfulness off of somebody else's assignment and you cannot do that. And so because fruitfulness for them looks one way, it may look different for you another way, but it's still fruitful. You're still moving forward. You're still developing. I heard about this. I'm just throw this in here real quick and this may help somebody. There was this guy, um, there was this uh, pastor that was telling the story about this gentleman that he knew that he had gone to school with. And um, he was dealing with calling. He was talking about calling and, and understanding purpose in life. And this guy was a mechanic. And this guy was very successful as a mechanic. But um, he was also good. He was like good with details, things of that nature. But he also had a heart for God. And him and his pastor used to have Bible studies when they were in college together. And um, that's what God, they were part of the same fraternity. And they would have Bible studies on Friday night where everybody else was partying and doing stuff. And so what began to happen was this guy went into, as a mechanic, went into the field of being a mechanic. And then the other guy who was a pastor. Now what began to happen was this, the guy was fruitful, but he also had a heart to teach the word of God. Now, this was very interesting. There was a, another pastor friend that told this guy, he says, don't leave what you're doing because this guy felt as though just because he liked to teach people the word that he felt like he was called a pastor. This guy, he said, and another guy told him, he says, don't do it. 
He says, if you do it, it's going to affect your, um, your finances. It's going to affect your marriage. And it'll also affect your children. The guy didn't listen to him. He went into pastoring. He says, after one year of going into ministry, he says, man, he talked to this other pastor friend of his. He says, man, everything that guy said came true. He says, because I went into this area. He says, I wasn't called to go into this area. He says, my finances depleted. He said, uh, my marriage as a result became shaky. He says, then my children, they got out of alignment with God. And he says, man, he says, I got to go back and do what God originally told me to do. He said, because God had called him to be a mechanic. Sometimes we hear calling. We don't think that God can call a person to be a mechanic because it doesn't seem like that's this grand thing. Watch what happened with this guy. He went back to being a mechanic. He developed this system. Now watch this. He, he developed something as to how to diagnose things in cars at a more accelerated rate. But he knew enough, he didn't know anything about computers, but he knew things about cars. He connected with a friend of his who knew stuff about computers. And he asked him, he says, if we do this, can the computer do this? He's like, yep. He says, we do this, can the computer do this? Yep. He said, so, oh, he said, wait a minute, let's come together. Let's spend some time together to develop a, a product that can now diagnose the problems within cars at an accelerated rate as to what was currently on the market. They came together and did it. Another guy who started CarMax got wind of what was happening. They were opening stores, um, um, mo- uh, lots in different states. And he asked this guy, this team, if they would now open up stores next to all of their car maxes to be the place where we send our cars to diagnose problems. And so they got the patent on that thing and became wealthy as a result of it. This guy, if he would have stayed trying to do something in ministry or in, in passion that he wasn't called to do, God called this dude to fix cars and to help people diagnose problems in their cars and get, and God blessed him as a result. And God restored him back to where he was, or even actually greater than before he even left out to go into ministry. Don't neglect what you're called to do. Don't minimize what you do. Where are you being fruitful? That's where you need to be faithful. Where are you being fruitful now? That's where you need to be faithful. If God is leading you to do something, then you realize, wait a minute. I see that whenever I do this, I'm good at this. I'm fruitful at this. I see productivity in this area, but now I can begin to learn how to become more skilled in it so that I can produce more fruit. Remember, scripture talks about, I think it's in John 15 when he talks about, I think I did a message on this years ago, pruning for productivity. That even when you're being fruitful in the area, sometimes you need to prune things, the stuff that doesn't work, the stuff that you can get rid of to now sharpen and hone yourself into that rhythm of what God called you to do to even produce more fruit. What is it that God is showing you to do? There's this word productivity, man. This thing has been ringing in my ears. It's like you're being, you're pruned for productivity. You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to walk in power. And don't you know that guy at the same time, he can still minister and talk to people as they come in to get their cars fixed. He can still have conversations and still share what he knows. And he can still be a minister of reconciliation, just sharing the light of God, of the glorious gospel with people he come into contact with. There is an anointing to do business, folks. There is an anointing. There's a grace to be a pastor and a leader. There's a grace to be a CEO. Just like there's a grace to be a prophet, there's a grace to be a janitor. You might be called to be in that school system for this season and for this time because ain't nobody else in there packing what you got packing on the inside of you. And somebody may be afraid to step out and you might be the third or fourth person God has called to do it. And he's going to have to keep going to another if the last person didn't answer the call. Why does he have to raise? Raise up somebody else to do what you are right there to get done. And to be you in the process, you don't have to be like sister so-and-so and and this person or that person. God graced you to be you. And it's time for you to be you. Watch this. See, the father is glorified when we bear fruit. And if we don't bear fruit, watch this. He takes it away. But though that says that he talks about that in John, 
He says this, if you don't bear fruit, I'm taking away. It's almost like there's another passage that talks about why do you take up the sun? Why cumbereth up the ground? This was a guy who had been doing something for, I think it was about three years, and he didn't see fruit of productivity. And so the guy, the master was like, okay, shut it down. He was like, wait a minute, give me one more year. Let me put dung on it. Let me put fertilizer on it. Let me work it to see if I can get productivity from it. Because in other words, if you are in a space that you're not called to be in, you are occupying somebody else's space. You go and purchase a building you won't call to go into, and that building belongs to somebody else. And God is he going to have to get you out of there just to get them in there because you're out of place. Oh, I know this. Yeah, for some, that can be strong word. But watch this. You got to get into the rhythm of what God called you to do. Wherever he guides, he's going to provide. And there's going to be supernatural provision this year. There's going to be, and there's, some of it will be in ease. Some of you are going to stumble into the blessing. I don't know who that, I just heard it and saw it like that. It's almost like you will just walk into it, that there'll be things that you'll acquire because God knows that you needed to get it done, that you didn't even ask for in some cases, but because you're walking in the purpose and in the vein of what he's called you to do, he knew that you would need these resources to get it done at the level that he called you to do it. Everything God, God talked to me about enhancing cameras. He talked to me about it's like we got to get our media quality up to a whole nother level in place because of what he's called me to do. He says, I told you to go teach my people who they are. And part, watch this. And he already told me. He says, media is going to be a huge part of what you do. The media department, the media area. So that means we need skilled people in it. We need the equipment to get it done because media is going to touch every other aspect of what we do. I've already seen it. But he says, watch this. I need you to walk in quality. Because you don't know who's going to come across what it is. Because they may not have heard the word because of the package that it was in. Ooh, Jesus, Lord, that oh, man. You might have the right message, but wrong packaging. And people are bypassing just because it doesn't look like it's, it doesn't match up to the quality and level of what you possess. This is why, listen, you got to walk in excellence. The spirit of excellence has to be within you. You're going to have to clean, declutter some places. And so I don't want to get into, oh man. You're going to have to clean and declutter some places and begin to reorganize and reshift and refocus in some areas. Clean out what you don't need. For some of you, that's going to be, ah. I feel like I can say this, that I'm being inspired to say it. It's almost like it's going to be the outward demonstration of what's happening internally. When you clean out the clutter, you're going to think better. Some of you need to clean out. It's like, okay, let me see what it is that I'm called to do. Let me see what my gifts, talents, and abilities are. Let me write it down. Let me make it plain. Let me go back. Some of you may have had plans that you wrote years ago. Go back and revisit and say, God, what do I need to take away? What has changed since then? Well, how do I fine tune this thing? Let me remove everything else and let me see what you're currently saying to me. What is it? And from here, step by step, throw away what you thought it should have been. What is it? In Genesis 1, 1 through 2, how much time I got? <sighs> okay, I'm going to have to get ready. I ain't even start my clock today. So uh, I'm just going by the time that it is right now. <laughs> In other words, when God says he's going to prune, he's going to cut off what's not needed or counterproductive so that you can produce more. Whatever is not needed or counterproductive. Whatever is not needed or counterproductive. What don't you need? I'm like this. I'm, I'm not a hoarder. I like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of them guys. I like clutter-free environments. I'm like this. If I find something that I ain't used in two to three years, more than likely I ain't going to use it here on out. It's probably outdated, can't use it, so why keep it? Well, I'm going to keep it just in case. It's just, it's just preventing room for what's new. Remove it. I ain't needed it then, so I, I don't need it now. Some things you got to stop and say, what is it that I need to remove? What is it? What is it that I need to get, get rid of? What is a hindrance to me? What is hindering me? If you keep letting hang around you what's been hindering you, it's going to bring you down. So remove it. You have to redefine. I'm not one of those people that just tell you cut off everybody in your life. 
But some some people, some talk conversations, yeah, you don't have to cut off some stuff. Because when you're elevating and they keep trying to bring you down to live where they are, God is moving you to another level. Some friends I didn't have to get rid of. They just didn't show up because where I was going, they weren't there. You see what I'm saying? They weren't where I was going. They weren't located where I was going. It has nothing to do with them. I love them. Miss them even. But it was like, God, this is where you're taking me. And where you're taking me is far more glorious than where I am. And I got to get to where you're calling me to be. This is, this, there is such a reshifting in your life. This is a divine shift. God is shifting stuff out and in. This is where it feels uncomfortable. This is where you have, when you start decluttering, it looks messier. It's like spring cleaning. It looks messier in the beginning because you're cleaning everything out. And you're cleaning everything out because Satan can't have anything on you. And so there are things that you're getting ready to go into that now I'm telling you, you're going in stronger this year. You said that last year. Well, you better believe it this year. You got to believe it. You have to accept the word of God. And you got to believe the word of God. And now you got to demonstrate the word of God. In Genesis 1, 1 through 2, let me see. I might end here. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay, okay, okay. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Let's break this down with form. I want to deal with this word. It was a w- without form. That word form, it means lie waste. It was desolate, desert, nothing, worthless, in vain, confusion, empty place, wilderness. Have you ever uh, associated yourself with any one of those words? Do you feel like you've dealt with any one of those things? Have you ever felt desolate? You ever felt like nothing? You ever felt like what you was doing wasn't mattering, wasn't working, that it wasn't productive? You felt like you were being counterproductive. You felt like even confusion. You don't know what you're supposed to do. Empty place, a wilderness. It's like you just existing. You just living day to day. And it's like you're not fulfilling purpose. So it's like you're not even excited to get up in the morning because you're not getting up with purpose in mind. Void. And then watch this. This word void means an indistinguishable ruin. Emptiness. This is this is something when something is void, it is indistinguishable ruin. You see the ruin, but you don't even know what it was supposed to have been in the first place. Is indistinguishable. It's, it's, it's ruined to that place. It's empty void. So now if you don't have the original blueprint of what it was, now you got to use your creative ability to create something new now. You better hear me. You better hear me what I'm trying to tell you. You might have had a ruined life, but you can begin to recreate the, the fresh and the new. The good life can be rebuilt, can be created from where you currently are. This word darkness means misery, destruction, death, ignorance. I just don't know. Sorrow, wickedness, obscurity. You don't feel like anybody even recognizes you. It looks like everybody else is rising up. Everybody else is being successful, but you feel like nobody notices you, that they've forgotten about you. God is saying this, wait a minute, I got a remedy for this. I got a remedy for this. And when it talks about the Holy Ghost, he moved, he was brooding, he was hovering. But the Holy Ghost was brooding and hovering, waiting for something. What was he waiting on? The command? You're waiting for something to happen to you. But God is saying, what are you going to do to make something happen? You got to make it happen. You got to speak it. I empowered you to create. 
You are a co-creator with me. And so now I'm demonstrating how I want you to deal with something that's empty, void, indistinguishable. When you feel empty, when you feel like you're in obscurity, I'm going to give you the blueprint of how to do this thing. He says the earth was without form and void and dark, but God had, watch this, watch this. God had an image of what he wanted it to look like. What's the image? Satan has been working on your image. He's been making you feel like that you ain't worth it no more. He's trying to make you feel like that you ain't good enough no more. And God is saying, I need you to get a new image on the inside of you. What's the image that you have of you? Cause nobody can stop you, but you. Nobody can stop you but you. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself good? Do you see yourself successful? No. Well, it's time for you to start speaking. One of the quickest ways for you to change that is how you start thinking and how you start speaking. Start speaking what you want to happen. I think of myself well. I am in God's image and after y'all better. I'm about ready to tear something up here. I am in his image and after his likeness. I am created in God's glory. God didn't make nothing worthless when he made me. He made me in his image. He created purpose for me. I'm anointed to do this thing. The glory is in me and upon me. And I declare I'm successful at everything that I do. Whatever I touch works. Huh? God got an image. You better get an image. He used that image as the blueprint for his creation. Don't you know that earth is God's taste? I remember Jesse Duplantis, he had his encounter where he went to heaven. He has a book on it, um, Close Encounters of the God Kind. And he saw things, he saw hills, he saw valleys, he saw even snow-capped mountains, things of that nature. And even the angel who was escorting him told him, earth is God's taste. It's like, yeah. See, you just thought the sky came out of nothing. The trees came out just nowhere. No, God had the image of it. So he spoke it. Trees be, mountains come up, land separate, water come forth, vegetation grow. There were, <laughs> y'all, you got to get this image. You got to start with the end in mind when you create. Get the image of what you want and begin to speak from the end place. I am this. I have this. I am the CEO of a Fortune 500 company that I see my company now duplicating all across this nation and even going global. I declare, I see myself now. Watch this. I make $1 million monthly income. I have this. I am healed. I get the image. If I can get the image, then I know where to create from. See, if your image ain't right, you don't know what to create. And so if you don't know what to create, you don't even know what to talk. This is where Holy Ghost now can come in. And when you pray in tongues, you can pray out stuff. Watch this. You already know when you pray in tongues, he's going to speak things for your life according to the will of God. But now you've also been given a tongue which is the pen of a ready writer that can document on your heart, that can write the script of your life. If you're going to live in your future anyway, we might as well live in a future that we create. Glory, man, shoot. I'm ready to throw something right there. That's it right there. You're going to have to live in it anyway. So now begin to say, wait a minute, I get the image of me living a good life. I get the image. It doesn't mean attacks don't come, things don't happen, but they have no rule over me. And gee, I see myself living for God. I see myself doing right. I see myself overcoming this thing that I don't, I won't walk addicted for the rest of my life. I see myself free and whom the son has set free is free. Indeed. I see myself happy. I see myself laughing. And now by faith, I laugh. You listen, depression, you won't hound me anymore. Ha 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 ha. I look at stuff that make me laugh. I declare that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I declare that I'm excited. I declare that I'm stirred up to do the will of God for my life. I'm going to fulfill God's will for my life, whether you like it or not. Listen, I love you and you can't do nothing about it. And ain't nothing I'm telling you now. I love people. I'm not easily offended. Where did that come from? If you're a person who's easily offended, 
You need to start speaking. Get the image of yourself being able to handle if somebody say something negative about you. Because if you can't handle the criticism of people, you ain't ready to go into the fullness of what God called you to do. Because with the hundredfold comes persecution. Somebody going to say something, do something that's going to contradict what you're trying to do, that's going to try to shut down your motivation, shut down your progress, and try to shut down your thinking process. And don't you dare. You might as well. This is where you got to soar like the eagles and rise above Christian turbulence. You got to live above that thing. Uh-uh, I'm coming from this image. So what you say don't mean nothing to me because you don't want to affect how I think about myself. God is the only one. I get my image from the image bearer and the image maker. He made me in his image and in his likeness. And so that's where I get my image from. That's why there's an identity crisis in this earth at unprecedented rates because they don't recognize they're in God's image and after his likeness. And when God made you, he did not make you on mistake. He did not create you as a man and make you feel like a girl. That is not the spirit of God. No, I'm telling you, I'm sorry. I have to say it as a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean, listen, just because I don't agree with how you live does not mean I have a fear or phobia of how you live. I don't agree with it. I ain't homophobic. Uh, uh I'm telling you, God, why you? He created you in his image and likeness. Well, how come I had this feeling? This is why the Bible says you must be born again to change your nature. When you change your nature and renew your mind, it'll affect your emotions and your feelings. Oh, some of y'all said, uh-uh, uh-uh. See, that's the lie of the enemy. Once you understand who you are and whose you are, you walk different. I come against the spirit of perversion. I know I, I, some, some people, some people, listen, mm -mm, don't I'm, you want, you want me to give you a, a, a Satan has been trying to, he's been pumping field the last 20 years. He's been pumping this image to control the culture. I knew it was coming where we are right now. I saw it years ago. Many others did too. It's the image and he is setting the tone and he's setting the stage for the Antichrist to come and to get ready to manifest himself. Satan is so blatant with stuff that he is boldly declaring it in the face of people and saying, I dare you to do something about it because now I'm going to shame anybody who comes against my agenda. And if you now are not confident in who you are in Christ, you are coward back and won't speak up on areas that we need to speak up on because we are the body of Christ. We have not been created to be controlled by culture, but to dictate and to dominate the culture. Now, if enough of us don't think like this, we just succumb to the culture and say, you can't say that. You might offend. Don't speak truth. But watch this, the Bible says speak the truth, but do it in love. I don't have to be mean when I speak it, but I still got to speak the truth. Watch this, some people just say, just let your light shine. Yes, I let my light shine, but there comes a point, words have to be said. Because see, words bring conviction. Jesus said, the words I speak are spirit and life. So I can still be kind and nice, but still come to a point where at some point, I'm not talking about people who are sinners. I'm talking about when you get into now believers. Because sinners practice sin because that's their nature. But when you change your nature and get born again, we're supposed to do different and live different. And it has to be addressed. Judgment begins in the house of God. It don't end here. But he starts dealing with his children first. He said, clean this up. Check this. Do this. You judging me. No. Nah. That's the spirit of God convicting you. And Satan wants to condemn you so that you run away from God and now embrace people who live just like you. So that you won't feel convicted anymore. So you want to. Okay. I, <laughs> whoever won't deal with that. I know. I know. This come with it. I'm telling you now. When God gets ready to invade your life with things, he starts dealing with areas because I haven't even talked and dealt with the things that hinder the kingdom of God. The scripture that talk about if you practice certain things, you won't receive the kingdom of God. You, it won't work for you. 
because you're involved in this stuff. And so we got to work on making sure that we still live holy and have a healthy reverential fear of God that we don't take his grace for granted and now try to live a lascivious lifestyle, no restraints. And God is saying, I'm going to now invade, pray stuff like I'll pray for myself, God, and for other people. If anything that happens that, that's even being, I'm being tempted in the area, send a disruption. I don't care. If you know I need to dis- send a disruption. See, you put no confidence in the flesh. Because watch this. You start dealing with some of those things, you watch what's getting ready to happen. I'm telling you, you watch what's getting ready to happen. You got, but that has to be dealt with. That has to be dealt with. And God is saying this. I'm stopping here. Whatever is without form or void, whatever has been dark, I want you to begin to work on the image of the new life, the good life that I created for you to have. Get the image. When you get the image, some of you, okay, I'm just using this as an example. Get the image of the house, put it up, speak over it. Don't just put it up. Look at it. Think about yourself living in it. Think about your marriage blessed. Think about you all liking each other, enjoying one another's company and say, okay, God, now I declare, watch this, based off of the image that I just created, let me begin to build it with the words that I speak. I declare these things over my life. I declare that I have a blessed marriage. I declare that I have a great relationship with my children. I declare that I prosper in all that I do. I declare that I walk out of debt, all needs are met, have plenty more to put in store. I declare that I walk in great peace and joy. I declare that I laugh again. I declare that I'm free from the spirit of depression. I declare that right now that you've not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I declare that I have discipline and self-control in my life. I declare right now that my body is for the Lord and the Lord is for my body. I declare that I have a well-tuned body in Jesus' name. I declare that I lose this weight. I not only lose the weight physically, but I lose every weight mentally. In Jesus' name, I will not carry grudges. I will not hold art against my brother and sister. That I walk free. That I'm not easily offended. I declare it in Jesus' name. And begin to do that over the next 30 days and watch what starts happening. Watch the new image that starts shaping and forming in you. Because now, because you're speaking it out of your mouth, the light of the gospel, the light of God's favor, the light of the Holy Spirit will begin to show you and check you when you're about to slip right back into that thing. All of a sudden, what you've been sowing in your heart going to come to your mind and say, remember, remember who you are. Remember, resist the devil and he'll flee. Remember, overcome evil with good. Remember. It says, you know what? You're right, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for interrupting me before I slip right back into that way of thinking and believing and living. And change is going to happen. It's going to be wet with the water. You start doing this, watch how you start transforming and watch how you start acting and those actions going to lead you into. In Jesus name. Amen. This was a building block moment. I want you to hear what has been said. I want you to go back and listen to it. See, this turned out a little different than I even thought it was going to be. But this is so interesting how God does some things. He gives you that because sometimes we get so excited in a glorious moment that we miss the day in, day out. After the glory lifts, it's like, okay, what's the consistent thing that you do? that gets you to that place. It's consistency that brings that breakthrough. And it's time for the glory to be revealed in your life. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your presence. We declare and decree that all is well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. There may be somebody out there today that you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but I want you to now confess him as your Lord. This This is the start of you creating a new life for yourself. I want you to simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. 
I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord. And I'll serve only him. All the days of my life. Say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Amen. Hey, family, you're born again. For those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we want to connect with you, contact you, give you some information as to how to live a godly, overcoming, fruitful life. If that's you, we want you to contact us. Please contact us. It's very important that you connect and get involved uh, with a church community that can help develop you, train you in the things of God, how to live this Christian life. If that's you, we want you to connect with us. Uh, I believe on the screen is coming up. Um, an email you can send us, uh, send an email to, to connect at spiritoffire.us, connect at spiritoffire.us. I also say that you can also DM us on our social media platform. Let us know, hey, I got born again, listening to your broadcast. Or if there's somebody, you're already born again, you just may say, hey, this is blessing me. I'm learning so much from it. We want to hear from you. We want to hear testimony. That's part of our fruit. We want to make sure that what is being spoken is being manifested in your life. We want to see this fruit in your life. We want to see you grow. We want to see you develop in the things of God. We want you to live the life God called you to live. And so I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the mode of not just being a preacher, like Paul said, that I preach, but then I fall away from it because I ain't doing what I'm preaching. No, I want to make sure that I'm preaching what I'm doing. I'm not just, you know, uh, what was, what was the statement? Um, practice what you preach. Uh, I want to be a, a preacher of what I practice and let it flow and just let the byproduct flow out. This is what we do. You got to take time. I've been personally organizing myself, removing stuff, going through books, going through notes, organizing stuff, typing up stuff, getting rid of stuff that I used to have and stuff that was outdated. And I look at even goals and objectives that I had from years ago and say, OK, let me refine this and recalibrate this. And there are things that my wife and I have to talk about or a family has to talk about. It's like, no, OK, where are we seeing now? What is God doing with us now? Where, where are we headed now? Even for the ministry, we are headed in a direction. God called us to teach and to train people who they are in him and to help them develop, to now demonstrate the love of God through act of goodness and kindness. The world is ready for you to be revealed, to bring people in, raise them up, send them out into the earth for you to be trained as to be a bold, strong believer with the fruitfulness, the manifestation of God's love, the manifestation of his glory. There should be things that are taking place in our midst where we have documented proof. Documented proof. We pray for sick people and seeing them recover. We've trained people and counseled people and seen them come out of depression. We've seen people change their lifestyles and how they're living for God now. We're seeing people grow, families restored, marriages restored, whatever it is, people prospering. Things are supposed to happen. And we got to be adamant about it. We got to be passionate about it. Number one in your own life first. It's almost like scripture talks about take the big plank out of your eye before you look at the speck in your brother's eye. As I deal with yourself, areas that you need to clean up, areas you need to correct. That's what we need to be, self-reflective. And at the same time, as we do that, that helps us to minister with more grace and mercy to other people when we go out. Because we know how much grace and mercy God has given us. Helps you to treat people better. Stop being mean and cruel and rude. And you got to work on that. Sometimes you mean because you ain't happy with you. Because if you don't love you, it's hard to love others. Work on loving yourself. Work on now dealing with those things, those inward things you've been struggling with. It's time for freedom. It's time for you to confront it. It's time for you to overcome it. So now God can move you forward and you can begin to help produce greater fruit in the earth. Prune for productivity. That's what we're doing. I'm excited about it. I love it. Praise God. Well, y'all, at this time, if you desire to get connected with this ministry and join this ministry as well, if you desire to get filled with the Holy Spirit, then listen, we want you to contact us. We'll have somebody to pray with you, love on you. I'm telling you, we, we, listen, if God is calling you to do that, to connect with this ministry, join this church, we want you to make the decision. You are part of the answer. You know, that's the beauty of it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we look for certain things 
And God may say, you know what? I led you here for a reason because I want you to help with this vision and to get it to where it needs to be. Obey the spirit of God. Praise God. Well, at this time, we're going to honor God in our giving. Some information is coming up on your screen as to how you can sow and how you can give. We cannot do what we do without the continued free will support of you, the viewers. And we thank God for you, for our members and supporters, those that have been tithing and giving and sowing and supporting for years. And right now, even as I told you, we're going to begin to enhance in, in, in our worship experience and things of that nature. And so at this moment, there's information that's coming up on your screen as to how you can sow and give. But I also want to take this opportunity that I said, sometimes I've been forgetting to do it on certain um, Sundays, but I want to bring up the picture of uh, a new truck that we're believing for to even begin to do mobile ministry and things of that nature and outreach and all of that. And so I just believe that the Spirit of God dealt with me about believing for this, a box truck to get things done. So I said, okay, I'm just going to obey but right now, what I feel in my heart is just to get the people to believe with you for it. So I want you to stretch your hands towards the, the picture that's up on your screen now and say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new truck paid for in Jesus name. Amen. And Father, we just thank you for it in Jesus name. We also thank God for our new facilities of worship where we can have our office spaces and all of that. And so I want you to say this, say in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new worship center and spaces, office spaces, warehouses, gymnasium, paid for in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. You got to release your faith. You got to start working towards it. Amen. All right, y'all. I think that's it. I don't know if I need, this is a Super Bowl Sunday. And, you know, I had to wrap the jersey. So, <laughs> uh, oh, they say y'all talk about my jersey online. That's right. I'm represent Cowboys Nation, baby. Listen, till I see Jesus. I ain't leaving. I don't care. I've mean, I just been born and raised in it. So, all right, listen. I'm still optimistic. But, uh, hey, I'm going to enjoy the Super Bowl with my family. And just, listen, enjoy, have fun today. Even as you've sown, as you give, expect for it to be given. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and running over. God is going to cause men to give into your bosom. Expect it. Have your expectation on high. Praise God. Okay. In-person service next week. Next week we are in person, 1.30 p.m. Services start. Um, and so I do, you know, um, we're believing for a new space so we can even change and adjust our time frame and all of that. So we are really believing God to open up that door for us and that, um, that we're in the right place at the right time. So we thank God for that. So in person, so we're encouraging those in the local area, come on out. We'll still be virtual as well. Um, so we encourage you to come out and to worship together, invite somebody to come to church with you. All right. And we are in the process, we're going to be working on our, revamping our whole worship experience in person and online. We want to enhance and grow and keep adding pieces and components and growing and developing. And so we thank God for you with that. All right. All right, y'all. Well, I'm out of time, certainly not out of message, but as we dismiss, I declare and decree the favor of God, the wisdom of God, the grace and peace of God upon you and your family. I declare that all is well with you in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. See you next time. Peace.